So what we have here is a impedance transformer, and this one is in the ratio of a nine to one. Some folks will call this an un, -un. Uh, Sometimes they'll call it uh, mistakenly a Balin. Sometimes they will call it a trans match or a matching network. And I think all those names, except for Balin, are appropriate. So when we take a look at this, what we have is called a tri-filer winding. And that means we have three wires that are wrapped around this toroid a number of times. What I like to use is nine windings. Uh, th there's a video in the playlist attached below where we test nine windings, seven windings, and five windings, and kind of landed on nine being the most appropriate. You use this on a random wire antenna. And a random wire antenna is an antenna that's fed on the end, not in the middle like a dipole. And they're referred to as random wire antennas, but the length of the wire is anything but random. You want it to be a length that's not resonant on any of the amateur radio or ham radio frequencies or any multiples thereof. So there's a very specific list of lengths that you want to use for random wire antennas. Um, we use these because the impedance when you feed these wires at the end is around 450 ohms. And this being a 9 to 1, take 450 divided by um, 9, and then you get a 50 ohm impedance. And that helps with your matching and your standing wave ratio, or SWR, or VSWR, as some people call it. Um, the other thing that we've been doing is we've been looking at various core compositions. So this is a powdered iron core, and these are used a lot in 9-to-1 antennas and other radio applications. Um, this is probably my preferred core, is a ferrite toroid core, and this is a mix 43. And uh, we, again, in the playlist below, you'll see testing of this and other ferrite mixes. But we want to do our due diligence and make sure that we test as many different cores as we can so we understand which core is appropriate for our application. Um, <clears throat> typically, we look at around 80. When I say we, I'm talking about the folks at the Smoke and Ape Industries. Um, we take a look at uh, most of our antennas are 80 through 6. Uh, most of the time, they're actually 40 through 6. So we test these. Uh, we'll test this on 80 meters all the way through 10 meters. Um, it's typically what we'll do. And we'll, we'll test its ability to um, match impedance first and foremost. So what we have here is a test setup. This is the first test that we'll do. And instead of connecting this to an antenna, we have it connected to a resistor. Now this resistor is around 470 ohms, but we're really looking at seeing if it does a nine to one impedance transformation. Um, this is the one that we've been using and having a lot of luck with it. So we'll do that. Once that test is done, what we'll do is we'll set it up in a configuration like this. And we'll test the efficiencies. In both of these tests, we're going to use a nano VNA. We're just going to use an S2, S11 reflection test in order to test our SWR transformation. And that should be easy enough. Man, my phone is blowing up. Sorry about that. And then um, for this one, what we do is an S21 test. And we it's for insertion loss. And it helps us measure the efficiency or how much of our signal is lost through the transformation in the core. So we inject a signal through um, our nano VNA into this particular BNC connector through the core, and then that gets mirrored through the second core and then out and into another port on our nano VNA. It's called an S21 logmatic gain measurement. We take our results, we divide them by two because there's two cores, and that tells us how many decibels we lose going through a single core. We take that and we do some math to it, and that gives us a percent of efficiency. That percent of efficiency tells us out of 100, 100 watts, for example, maybe only 95 are making it out. And so we would say that this has a 5% efficiency loss. Now, those are made up numbers. I don't know what these cores are going to test at. I haven't done an efficiency test on these two particular cores. As I mentioned, this is a mix uh, two uh, powdered iron core. Um, the size of this core is called a T200. That means the outer diameter is two inches across. Whew. All of that, oh, one more thing I wanted to cover. This is a solid copper core tinned wire that we're using. Um, you may get different results with different types of wire, but this is what we've been using for everything. All right, with that said, let me get set up for the first test and we'll be right back. Okay, so what we have for our SWR test is a calibrated nano VNA. That calibration ends at the ground plane here. So it does not include this BNC configuration here, which I'm sure does have some impact, but it wouldn't be what I would consider significant. 
Um, our signal is going to come out of channel zero or S11 port. It's going to come up. It's going to do its thing, and it's going to reflect back based off of the impedance transformation capabilities of this particular toroid. So let's go to Nano VNA Saver and see what we see. Okay, so here is a Nano VNA Saver, and if you take a look at our control box for sweep control in the upper left-hand side, what you can see is we are doing a sweep from 1 megahertz to 30 megahertz. We're using 2,020 data points, so that means each one of our sweeps is 101 data points, and we are doing 20 segments across our span. That gives us 2,200, I'm sorry, 2,020 data points, which makes us a pretty granular uh, measurement. Each data point is 14.36 kilohertz in each step. And what we have here on our marker table is seven markers across our amateur radio bands. And um, we're going to see those markers and those markers will give us a reading of what our SWR was in each one of these cases. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're back with our results, and uh, there's a couple of things to note here. And the first thing, uh, my first impression is, is that this particular core is not particularly good at transforming impedance and the lower bands. So if we take a look at our data table here, uh, we'll start with marker number one, which is in the 160 meter band at a frequency of 1.90493. I typed in 1.9 and I got 1.90493 because that was the closest data point that we had, and that's good enough. So we take a look, we see an SWR of 13.274. Now, the internal tuners on most modern radios would not be able to help you out here. And you could do that with an external tuner, provided you had a little bit of a higher end. A lot of the tuners that I see are somewhere around 10 to 1 impedance matching. I know somebody's going to come here and say that my manual tuner that I've been using since 1974 do that just fine. And that might be the case, but uh, I wouldn't use this toroid as a nine to one or random wire core on a frequency that low. Uh, same thing with 80 meters. It's a better at uh, 5.117, but it's still not exactly what uh, I would be looking for. When we look at the 40 meter band, we're starting to get in the serviceable range at 2.5. I would still want a little bit better. Same thing with 30 meters. We're looking at 1.9. Once we get to 20 meters, we start to get into what I would consider the doable, acceptable target zone. And that is 1.571. Uh, as we go up 15 meters, we are at 1.312, which is great. And then we start to go back up again, when we get into the 10 meter band at 1.497. Now you might say, Ape, well, you talked about a 450 ohm impedance and your resistor is using 470. Doesn't that skew the numbers? It does. It does skew the numbers. But what we're looking for is an approximation of impedance transformation. I think this represents that just fine. And what we're seeing is, is that the sweet spot for this toroidal core is somewhere uh, around the 20, 17, 15 meter bands. Outside of that, I don't think that this is something that I would choose over a ferrite core, which has a much, much flatter uh, graph across all of these. Um, again, I've got videos and I'll have them linked below that you can check those out. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to wire this up for our through test, and I'll be right back as soon as that's ready. Okay, and I want to go over how we're doing this test so folks can play along at home should you choose to do that. <clears throat> what you can see here is our calibrated nano VNA, and we are shooting a signal out of channel zero up through our apparatus through the core number one into core number two, and then back down into our nano VNA. Now, what I've done is I've taken the grounds of both of these and I've shorted them out together, which is a perfectly fine and legitimate way to do this test. Let's go back to Nano VNA Saver. Here we are, Nano VNA Saver. And what I want to do is I want to come down here to Display Setup. I want to click that. And I'm going to change my uh, display chart from an S11 to an S21 gain. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out and then I am going to run the sweep. So what we can see here is our loss represented in decibels. Now, keep in mind, these values need to be divided by two to get our efficiency rating. But already what we can see is that 160 and 80, these are pretty unacceptable values uh, from my standpoint. I would even say that is true at, um, at 40 meters. 
And uh, 20 meters is, uh, <laughs> you know, somewhere around a negative uh, 2.5 dB down. Not particularly good. Uh, we start to get somewhat acceptable, I guess, around uh, 15 and 10. But uh, what I would say is, is that I would shy away from using something like this because these cores would be much more lossy than a ferrite equivalent. Let's go ahead and do the math. We'll come back and take a quick chart and we'll compare this to an FT140-43 core and make some determinations. Okay, so we're back with our data and hopefully this is in a format that's understandable by everybody. <laughs> but what you can see in our table is the different uh, frequencies that we use, the different bands that we used. And then we have two rows that talk about the two different uh, tow rotor cores that were measured. So in a previous video, I did the FT140-43, and then you can see here the lowest that we have is 95%, 95.82% efficient on the 10 meter band. Um, that core does pretty good in terms of efficiency. Now, when we take a look at the T200 Mix 2, it's a little bit of a different story. So at 160 meters, our core is only 30% efficient. So that means if we're pushing 10 watts, we're only getting three out. And if we're pushing 100 watts, we're only getting 30 out. Uh, you can see we're at 51.74 at 80, 72.27 at 40. 30 meters, we start to get a little better at around 80% efficiency, which I think is starting to get into the acceptable range for a transformer like this. But uh, the further up we go, the better we do, all the way up to 96.71 at uh, 10 meters. So I think the moral of the story is, is that if you're going to use a core like this, you want to really be using it above 20 meters. Uh, keep in mind that we did see some problems with the ability to uh, transform impedance, so you're going to have a little bit of an SWR mismatch here. But uh, if you're asking me, stay away from the red toroids when building 9 to 1 transformers. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. Much appreciated.